Welcome back to another episode of the People of Packaging Podcast. I am your humble host who can never boast the packaging pastor <laughs> out of peak. Uh, you can go to packagingpastor.com, check out all the podcast episodes, my TEDx talk, my calendar link. You can text me, my YouTube channel, LinkedIn page, all of it, all of it. Go to packagingpastor.com or adampeak.com. They both go to the same place. Listen, today's episode is has been one that I've been excited about for a few months. We got the recording knocked out a few weeks ago, and I wanted to push it out this week because it's just that important. Brands everywhere are trying to navigate and figure out how on earth are they going to meet not just consumer demands, but now impending um, EPR regulations, California is changing up the recycling laws, trying to keep up with consumer demands along with regulatory demands is difficult. And I think that this partnership between Specrite and Compass is going to be absolutely critical to quickly understand, report out your sustainability, what it is that you're doing. So if you're watching this, uh, you can you can see behind me, I've got the Specrite page up. You can go to S-P-E-C-R-I-G-H-T.com, Specrite.com, and you can click on sustainability. They've got a place that you can download some reports. There's a there's a way to chat there. You can jump into the to the chat on the website and say, I want to connect my specs to quickly understand LCAs through Compass and someone will reach out to you. If for some reason they don't, hit me up. Remember, you can go to packagingpastor.com and text me or schedule some time and I'll make sure you get connected up with the folks at Specrite. So what Matthew and Prashant have built, and, and we got to give a shout out to uh, my man, Adam Armstrong over there, who's their VP of partnerships. And what they put together, I think is an absolute game changer for the industry. So go to specrite.com, click on sustainability. You can download a report. You can jump into a chat. But if you're a brand, this is the time right now, planning for 2022, to get your specs right so that you can pivot when you need to, you can understand your sustainability and go for it. So I get to interview and sit down with the CEO of Triac, Prashant Jagtop, and also the CEO of Specrite, Matthew Wright, and that's going to be happening right now. I am here with a, a group effort. Uh, we've got uh, Matthew. I think you might be our first or second repeat guest on the People of Packaging podcast. I should get you a T-shirt or something. Yeah, no pressure there. Yeah, yeah. It says uh, says I was I was a guest on the People of Packaging podcast twice, and all I got was a stupid T-shirt. I'm still waiting for my T-shirt, but I'll take it. Oh, okay. The first one? You didn't get the first one? That's weird. Okay. Yes. I never right. get any. It, you know, there's there's supply chain issues. I'm sure it's <laughs> hung up somewhere. So <laughs> uh, anyway, I'm joined by Matthew Wright. Uh, if you haven't listened to his first episode, stop listening to this and go, uh, go listen to uh, the interview that I did with Matthew. Uh, it's a phenomenal background on his story. I won't make you go through and repeat everything, but certainly we're going to talk about Specrite. Uh, it, we're excited to kind of get into this and talk about a partnership that has formed with Specrite, um, along with uh, Triax or Compass. And so I'm also joined by their, uh, what would you say, CEO and founder? Do you have any other cool titles? That's right. Well, yeah, you can add president to that too. <laughs> and president. Wow. President, CEO, founder, general manager, uh, vice Chief president. Chief programmer. Chief, chief of yeah, chief programmer. There you go, uh, <laughs> Prashant Prashant Jagtop. So uh, thank you guys for coming on. This is exciting stuff that we're going to be talking about today. I, I uh, th when I first heard about this partnership, I was like, uh, is this real? It was that's kind of I mean not not that I didn't believe you, but I kind of didn't believe you. Like th this would actually be a thing that was going to happen, um, and it's 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 awesome. I think for the packaging industry at large. Uh, just exactly what it is that they're going to be able to accomplish. So, um, like I said, if you haven't if you haven't heard from Matthew, if you if you don't know his story, um, you should go back and listen to the podcast. Uh, so I'm going to let uh, Prashant kind of start here. Just give 
a quick backdrop on you know who you are and what what your what your company does um and then matthew you can kind of we'll jump in and have you uh share a little bit uh, about spec right just a quick overview and then but i really want to dig into the the meat and potatoes of this thing here because it's it's really exciting so go ahead prashant yep thanks adam so uh so my background is really in product life cycle management plm and so I spent many years actually uh, designing software as well as using the software with our customers to help them launch products. And packaging are always part of products, right? So with that background, about 12 years back, I figured out that sustainability as it was just, you know, just uh, being started, many companies were talking about it. Uh, maybe had special projects on it, you know, like how do I make something sustainable? And what we thought was it would be really cool if we can analyze for sustainability really upfront in the design cycle. And so that's how the software got started. That's how the company got started. And uh, so over the years, we have been working with many, you know, many companies uh, in the consumer packaged goods area, in the medical uh, packaging area, things like that and helping them actually not only design better packaging, but to be able to report against their corporate sustainability goals. That's how the background is. And uh, as, so obviously that's grown quite a bit um, mm -hmm. over since, since you first started. You said 12 years ago, is that correct? Yep, that's correct, yep. Yeah, so, so over, over these 12 years, I think, sustainability from a brand perspective has gone from a like to, to a must have. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. With, and you know, a lot of it is what I would call changing from having special projects on sustainability, mm. where you would take one, you know, one package or product in your portfolio and make it sustainable and then talk about it. Right. As opposed to today, I mean, companies are really committing themselves, putting out goals. You know, uh, about 90% plus companies in the S&P 500 already have CSR goals that they publish. And so, you know, these corporate level goals, everybody else is trying to figure out how to meet them. You know, so if you go to a packaging department and uh, you, understand, you ask them, hey, what are you doing about sustainability? They're all trying to figure out how to meet these goals whether it is for you know, CSR, whether it is for Ellen McCarthy Foundation, or whether it is for ESG, the you know, environmental, social, and governance goals. So there are so many different drivers that are coming across. And so companies are now figuring out, how do I make it part of my day-to-day -day business? Right. And that's really where you know, SpecRite and us really come together, right? So, so you know, they manage the specs and we can actually do the analysis from goals to reporting in the same place. It, yeah, I'm, I'm, we're gonna, we're gonna, I uh, can't wait to dive into that. So uh, Matthew, I mean, obviously Specrite has been a, an awesome partner of the podcast and um, beyond that, just the, the people at Specrite have been incredible to work with. It's cool to see what's been happening as, as you're growing. You're an author now, by the way, that's a, that's a big deal. Uh, if anyone wants to support the podcast a little bit uh sh same shameless plug here but you can go to adampeak.com and there's a little button to buy buy uh, buy your book off of amazon so that's fun i think i probably get like i don't know a a, a high five from amazon or something like that but <laughs> uh, i don't want the t-shirt anymore i'll just take some more book sales so uh, oh perfect <laughs> There's a few uh, English teachers rolling rolling around right now. Can't believe I did that. So, <laughs> yeah. So, author, uh, CEO, and um, hair model Matthew Wright. Um, I already told Prashant he's uh, he's outnumbered us with with guys with hair. So definitely looks like it. If you had told me in advance, I would have shaved my head off too. Really? Just okay. To blend in. Just to blend okay. in. Okay. All right. I like it. I like it. At least get one of those. Uh, the like the bald. Um, skin with things that the, they cap. use in Hollywood. Yeah. Skull cap. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Next time. Yep. Next time. Absolutely. If you invite me again, right. For the t-shirt, I do it for the t-shirt. You do that for the, okay. There's it's people recorded. do anything for a free t-shirt. Yeah. Yeah. It's recorded. I, I don't know. I'm going to edit that part out. I think that's going to be weird. <laughs> <laughs> Giving away all my books, sales profits and uh, t-shirts. That's right. 
so Matthew, I, I mean, you know, obviously you're, you're passionate about data, you're passionate about specifications. Um, and, and so talk a little bit about how you and Prashant met or where did this idea come from? Uh, it seems so natural, but I'm sure it, it was, you know, it was, it was a, a long developing partnership that made a lot of sense early on. Yeah, and I think in general, you know, not to click back through the spec right story, Prashant did a good job and, and you have too. You know, we really, uh, my passion is just watching people do really mundane tasks uh, that are very smart people that should be developing the next best products out there or most sustainable products. And so just this crazy chasing of data or chasing of samples or spreadsheets or reliance on vendors that always drove me kind of insane to watch. And, and obviously the the energy is just building more and more as the expectation of on people and products is, is greater than ever that you just can't do it the way it's been done. And so specification kind of management first approach is really what has been driving Specrate and propelling it forward uh, to be something you know great and in, impactful. And so, you know, that re to me, and we've talked about this, I think on the last podcast, so I won't go through it again. One of the things that drives me insane is, is allowable waste. And Allowable waste has been built in because there's bad processes or no processes or no standard language or the data is missing, all those things. And so really trying to crush that, which I think is a direct impact of sustainability. And then the second click to that, I think, is just the fact of sustainability. And I love what Prashant just said. It's not an event. You know, it's been looked at historically as an event. To me, it's an ongoing kind of journey. And uh, so now to your question, I, I think one thing I've always been very open with is that we really... Uh, can be the master data, we can have the spec data, but really let's look at tools that are out there, you know, exist already today, that we can integrate with and make the outcomes for our clients even better uh, than, than it would be as a standalone opportunity. So in that journey of just going out and discovering opportunities to work with people is how we got brought together. And, and our Adam, uh, Adam Armstrong, who you know, uh, is in charge of kind of seeking out those partnerships and finding good people that will give our clients a better experience than they would just with us or, or perhaps the partner in, in of themselves. And so we've really enjoyed it. I think the future is super bright for this, this uh, partnership. Yeah, no doubt. The, you, you talked about, uh, I, I love that quote. It's always interesting to me when people talk about sustainability as an event, when the actual definition of the word is like to sustain, like to carry on. You know, so it's like to have like one time sustainability doesn't actually make any sense given the, you know, the word etymology. So, but I agree with you. There's a lot of that. Um, I, I've really appreciated what, what, you know, product like Compass has been able to do, which is sort of to help uh, equalize or democratize access to information to provide a little bit of, you know, or actually a lot more teeth to it rather than just anecdotal. Um, I, I saw, I'm trying to remember where I read this, there was a, a study that was just recently done and it was like, what words, um, uh, what words would you say are the most sustainable? And it was like a US and EU survey. And it was like, number one is recyclable and number two is biodegradable. And I'm like, man, we have such a, we have such an education gap that it's really incumbent upon brands to to actually be able to track and 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 own the sustainability process because people in general are not going to necessarily do the right thing but brands can do the right thing they can make their choices and so um i don't know i've always i've always really appreciated that um about about what compass has been able to do and is going to continue to do so uh, we have all these things out there i want to start with uh, the this this integration so um, cause I, I've got a ton of questions around not just, you know, these CSR goals, the Ellen MacArthur foundation goals, you've got extended producer responsibility. That's becoming a hot topic. All of this stuff is going to fall on brands. And I want to get into that, but let's talk about what actually is, is happening now with this partnership. So if I'm, you know, let's say that I owned ABC, uh, consumer good company. And right now well, it's, it's a traditional thing where, pretty much I have a general idea on what my specs are, but my vendors pretty, my vendors own the specification data. You know, we've got a great relationship with our vendors. They, uh, they have all the data we have, we have it in a spreadsheet somewhere. Um, 
but now I get hit with a CSR goal or I get hit with EPR rules or California recycling labeling law changes or whatever it is is going to happen. Um, how does this connection with SpecRight and uh, Encompass, how, how does that, how is that going to help me as a brand? Well, let me, let me uh, jump on it because we're the start of the story, Prashant, and, and yep. toss it to Absolutely. you. So I think you said a couple of kind of obviously interesting and, and compelling comments in there. One is, you know, and I didn't know where this would go from the start of spec, right? But one of our biggest lead gen is, is vendors. Uh, yeah. say, oh, you know, go call this company up and help them out because I'm tired of it uh, and I don't have all the data they need. And so we really work with the vendor community. We, we've thousands and tens of thousands of vendors uh, putting the, system, the data on the system to build that picture of the spec first approach for the clients. Uh, yep. And again, those can be both relationships. And so you build that, that common platform of data uh, that allows a language, you know, the systems and computers and, and, and all that need a, a methodology to be, have great outcomes. And so we create that baseline methodology of data flow that then we can integrate as we do through our open APIs into tools, uh, which I'll let Prashant uh, handle, but in a much cleaner fashion and real time and accurate that then the tool such as Compass can then visualize and allow the clients real time uh, to get data that they want out of that you know bit broad spec management tool. And then I'll let Prashant talk a little bit about you know once we once they grab the data, what they do with the data and the fact that they can actually manipulate what if scenarios in the in the Compass and then toss it back to impact the spec for the future. So we we build that baseline of great spec data and a common methodology, common language. And then uh, there's an open API into Compass and I'll let Prashant jump from there. Cool. Yeah, absolutely. Now just Adam, just imagine, you know, how powerful the latest correct data can be at a company, right? Most of the time when we were talking to our customers, they wouldn't have the specs in one place if they had it at all, right? Sometimes with vendors, sometimes in different pockets within the organization, sometimes in documents, PDFs, et cetera. So whenever we used to go talk to our customers, the problem was we knew how to analyze for sustainability using lifecycle analysis, but we didn't have the data to do it on. So now with this integration, it becomes very easy because you know companies don't even have to enter the data again into Compass, they can just connect. And this, the specs, the material information, the manufacturing information, the, the supplier information, like how far it's traveling, all that stuff can just be absorbed. You know? And then with that, we can run a analysis uh, for life cycle analysis and find out all the environmental impacts. Now, once you do that initial baselining, that's where you can quickly run scenarios. You can say, what if I made this change? What if I changed the material? What if I changed lightweighted it? What if I added PCR? What if I did biomaterial? You know, all those things can now, what if scenarios can be very easy now. And so that's the real power of this integration where you know, running all these things now is pretty easy to do. Hmm. And I think what's cool about it, and, and certainly love to get Prashant's thoughts on it too, is you know, we all can then become focused on being experts in our field, right? So, you know, Prashant doesn't have to be the expert of chasing data or looking for data or trying to figure out the platform. We, we don't necessarily have to be the visualization LCA tool out there, uh, such as they're doing. And so, again, I think everybody agrees, you know, specialists in a, in a broad market really provide great outcomes. And so uh, I think that's what's also exciting for us is we've got such a massive roadmap ahead of us over the next couple of years. Just this allows the customers to get great experience and tools they need right now uh, and allow us to keep developing things that are more about the network and sharing of the data uh, than it is, you know, stuff that uh, Compass or Triac does so well. Yeah. And in, from our point of view, it's like best of breed, right? So we are good at what we do and you guys are good at what you do. So why not bring it together for our customers? Yeah, that, uh, that makes a ton of sense. So, the the data that uh, you know my my fictitious company gets and i appreciate what you said matthew as a as a uh, person who is currently employed uh by by a packaging manufacturer i appreciate the love for us vendors um but i as but i totally agree with you as a 
as as a company that makes packaging, right? Like we we make folding cartons and labels and uh, retail displays and all that stuff. It, we would love to have a single source of truth to update specs and to you know have that common platform or the 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 common language, right? That we can be speaking. So I totally agree with that. But um, so so let me let me go back to this to this like fictitious scenario because I'm curious to understand once I've run that um the the data that i get from compass is that is is there a reason then to say okay we've got is that general data that if i wanted to engage further that i could go dig deeper on outside of the the integration with either triac or a consulting firm or something like that um like how how deep is the data that i would get um when i when i run this analysis so when you run the analysis, you get about eight different environmental indicators. Okay. And uh, so those eight indicators are usually more than sufficient to really, you know, figure out the sustainability part of it. Now with that data, you can do more things. So for example, you can, uh, you know, bring together uh, things like uh, damage rates, or you can get bring things together like uh, you know, PCR content, biorenewable content, all the other stuff that you can add to it and perform even more uh, scenarios. You can do cube efficiencies. You can do, you know, cost, total cost of packaging. So you can definitely take the basic analysis and add more and more data to it to do a more complete analysis. Okay. And with that data, with that analysis, you can even... Uh, you know, do claims. So if you wanted to show how your packaging is better than maybe your previous packaging or some other packaging, you could take the analysis and actually get it third party reviewed or, you know, uh, comply to ISO uh, standards. And you can, uh, the, the analysis and the data is that accurate is what I wanted to tell you. Oh, that's cool. Because, yeah, because we spend a lot of time as a part of Compass to really make sure the background data, the sustainability data is accurate. The methodology that we use for calculating, you know, the greenhouse gases and other impacts, they are all, uh, you know, proven, they are all uh, consistent, they are all industry standard. So you can definitely take the data and do more things with it. Got it. I think, if I can, Adam, two things to jump on top of that. I think the, the what he just said was absolutely accurate. You know, people have been guessing for a long time and, uh, trying to guess, you know, in fairness, as accurate as they could. I think with EPR and, and other things, that that guessing game's over. And, yeah. and so I think you need the data that's in spec, right? I think you need the outcomes and the, and the tools that track and uh, the Compass product has to, to be accurate, you know, with, to a very fine level. The other thing I think that's interesting is that not, not a lot of people are talking about, we're all talking about how chaotic just the supply chain is. And certainly we're talking about the, the need for sustainability, but when you combine those two, it creates even more complexity. How do you how do you continue to be focused on sustainability when the supply chain just keeps moving on you, or you know point of origin keeps moving on you, or, or ingredients change constantly? And so, the only way you're even going to be able to, and this supply chain challenge to me is not going away for a very long time. So the only way you can do that's through good tools such as this this integration and and team and uh, in, in all the different facets, but. If you're trying to chase sustainability down for what it's been in the last year, forget about it. It's what's going to be for the next week uh, until the next change happens. Yeah, such a great point, because if I'm looking at uh, if, if let's say, for example, that, you know, I have to I have to pivot from one material to another material. If they if I'm in a 20 point, uh, you know, 65 percent post consumer recycled waste folding carton board um, and and all they have available is 24 point SBS board. And, and I need to get my product out. It would be super helpful to be able to know real quickly. Okay. What, what is the impact of this on my sustainability scorecard? And, and, you know, traditionally it seems like that question would not even really be asked because the acts getting that information would be really difficult. Um, much less making the change you know, there's still be, you know, reasons to have to validate and do all that kind of, you know, do your own testing, but to know not just what are the cost implications yeah. and the lead time implications, but 
what are the sustainability implications all within one tool? I mean, because that's going to, that's going to be, and it is part of the decision-making, you know, criteria right. for companies going forward. It's got to be both answers. Yes, we can resource this, but it also is as good or bad or better than, than what's happening now from a sustainability standpoint, that's got to be one answer given. And you can't do that without real-time data. Yeah. And you know, one other thing, Adam, is in the US at least for Walmart, if you're reporting things oh, yeah. you know, towards their project Gigaton, mm -hmm. the compass analysis and reports can be used for that. In fact, oh. Walmart recommends that you know you use compass. So when you asked about downstream, what else can you do? It could be reporting to Walmart, it could be uh, reporting to your CSR reports, it could be regulation, it could be EPR fees. So there are so many other things you can actually do once you have the basic data within SpecRite and then you do the analysis using Compass. So the data together can be useful in so many different ways. That's, yeah, again, I mean, that that is, that Walmart's not messing around. For those of you, I mean, I'm, I hope that, I hope that brands realize this. People are normally surprised when I'm like, yeah, Walmart's maybe one of the more innovative retailers out there when it comes to, sustainability and they're like walmart i'm like yeah they there's it's not a it's not a game to them they're 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 doing some great work and you know to both of your points they're they're a they're a massive retailer that if you've got to collect all of this data going all the way back to you know sort of part of the why behind spec right and matthew what you're talking about is you have these really highly talented um people who are either you know, packaging engineers or COOs or, uh, you know, vice president of manufacturing or some title like that, that are now trying to chase down specs and data and stuff like that in order to report it and collate a report because it's that important for them to stay on the shelf at Walmart. Um, now, imagine what they can do at that time. And those reports that have been historically driven by an event, you know, an event could be driven by whatever, uh, you know, they're dead the minute they were they're done i mean you know with with everything's changing and products changing and, and so uh, again you have to be able to have that time and point which you looked at it and then literally minutes later days later weeks later run it again you know and look mm -hmm. at that through that scenario now that's the expectation of data flow uh, i think in the future uh, that's going to be expected of every company out there driven yeah. by walmart driven by epr driven by whomever yeah or just driven by consumers in general right i mean there's yeah. th that's that's a um, that, that's definitely a very very real driving force behind a lot of this. Well, and it makes sense. It's not a, a wild statement, but you know, of all the surveys we ever have done, you know, close to ninety percent of the reason to be sustainable is driven by a human. Whether that's a the public, the you know, the CEO, it doesn't matter. It's a person driving this, and I think people can really understand what we're doing, which is real time data that's accurate. I think most people would be shocked that this isn't the way it is done every day today. Yeah. And when they do become aware of it, I think there's going to be a loud outcry for, you know, this type of process to happen all the time. Yeah. To, to correct you, though, I did uh, hear a report on a podcast today that uh, orcas are now attacking ships. Um, and so I think there's even a little bit of nature that's just like, ah, we're coming after you guys. We're done. We want that. We they're want over that. it. Yeah, they're over it. So it's maybe it's not all humans. Maybe now the, uh, you know, the orcas are finally they're over the the ocean plastic and they're, Fair enough, gonna, they're smart so probably. there's coming after people yeah and adam i'm going to say one more thing yeah when we started about 12 years back you know sustainability wasn't really that common a word so what we started thinking is i remember lean manufacturing has been around for you know 40 50 years right everybody's mm -hmm. talking about lean manufacturing really sustainability is about lean design right how, how do you? i make your design the most efficient using the least amount of material. And so really from our point of view, as an it's an engineering problem to solve, right? To, to make things lean from a design perspective. So that's right. how we think about it. And, and I love, I, I think again, the partnership and, and why it works is, you know, and Adam, you've heard my, my soapbox speech on this a million times, but you know, it's impossible for us not to make bad product when the specs manage the way it is today. And it's inappropriate. You know, we should not be having six to 10% allowable waste because we don't know exactly or the color was missed or the, the slotting was wrong because the spec was wrong. I mean, 
that's that's really not allowable today with technology that's available and the, the ability to visualize that data anywhere you sit with an iPhone or iPad or whatever it is in a factory and, or transportation. So I think the combination of these are things that happen before the word sustainability gets kind of exciting. It's this is the stuff that should be being done anyway, which in of itself is sustainable in nature. So yeah. I, I think that's again, culture and philosophies are very similar aligned. Well, I mean, having, having a fiscal connection to sustainability is absolutely necessary. And I've referred to it before as the, the non-sexy part, the non-marketable part of um, of sustainability, you can't, you can't put something on your label that says we've reduced allowable waste because we control our specs by, by 75% year over year. Like nobody knows what that means, except for it means less waste, you know, greater margin. You could give people, you know, uh, wage increases. There's, there's all sorts of good things that you can do when you can drive efficiency through, through your process. And I totally agree, right? This is, it's it's it, it's not only irresponsible but it's become necessary i think it there's the it i'm i tell people all the time this idea about amazon um is amazon is a data company that's what amazon is they happen to sell products but they're a data company and more and more and more companies are going to have to become data driven companies first that do something else, you know, that, that make another product that, you know, whatever it might be. But if you're not paying attention to the data, you're going to get left behind. I there's, and I don't mean that in like a Kurt Cameron, if you're familiar with uh, bad evangelical movies, um, <laughs> that was a shout out to all of my uh, Colorado Springs Christian friends. I don't mean left behind like Kurt Cameron. I mean, like, <laughs> like you're, you're going to, you're going to get lost because people are just going to innovate quicker. It, yeah, and I think to your point, I think the, the world's also talking about the lack of you know, labor in general, and, and that's a massive topic. But I think that as, as people have more choices available to them to do cooler things, I don't think chasing you know, spreadsheets and making phone calls and trying to compile reports is necessarily going to be top of the list of exciting places to work. I think where they can use technology that really feels like the technology we use everywhere else in our life and they can make cool products that are better for the planet. Those are going to be the companies that don't have a hard time recruiting. And yeah. uh, again, you can't do that without data and technology. So true. So how um, we'll kind of wrap up the, the interview here. So I'm curious is it, so with this partnership, um, is this something where existing uh, Triax or Compass users now have access to SpecRite and also vice versa, or is it what, how, how, if people wanted this whole thing, what's the best way to get the whole thing if they don't have either one or if they have one or the other, how do they go about getting this all set up? Yeah, Prajan, if you, I go first and then sort of right. let you jump in, but I think from, from a SpecRite perspective, uh, you know, we're educating our sales force, which is, is growing constantly about the value of this, obviously sustainability, EPR, the topics are coming up every day. And again, instead of talking about, you know, how do we develop or design this? We talk about, you know, Compass is our partner. And so we're starting to have these conversations at the contract stage and then go back and re-educate our, our uh, client base. Uh, and again, selfish plug here, but Summit's coming up in, you know, third week in January, I know you both will be there. It's going to be a chance for us to showcase uh, Compass to uh, not only our existing clients, but potential ones. Um, and so it's still in the making, uh, but it's it's just getting now a lot of energy around it from our from our selling uh, efforts. But uh, I'll let Prashant talk about uh, his thoughts on it. Yeah, well, absolutely. So definitely joint, you know, uh, joint approaches to customers, but even our current customers, and we have a long list of customers, we definitely want to, you know, uh, make them aware of this integration and, uh, you know, introduce SpecRide into that, uh, into those conversations, because I know a lot of them are struggling with, you know, just managing the specs. So we're definitely going to have some infusion in our customer base, as well as pursuing joint customers. Got it. That's and why I'll, I'll, and I said, figured we'd jump on with you to put, get the word out. Yeah, no, let's do it. I'll, I'll even, uh, I'll give a little, uh, a, a little plug to all of the people that are competitors of mine in the packaging manufacturing space. 
So uh, this is this is free advice, but imagine having this for your own products. And you know, if your if your job is to go out and go to market and sell packaging rather than saying our PCR is better than you know this the standard, you might actually have data to back that up and and help people align with their goals and solve help solve your customers' problems. So. Um, is it safe to say, Matthew and Prashant, that this is not just for the CPG companies or for vendors to make, um, you know, recommendations, but I could even see a world where, and maybe this already happens, where packaging manufacturers or suppliers also have, uh, you know, spec right. And they're also running their own LCAs and they're, they're holding their, you know, raw material suppliers accountable to the types of raw materials they're going to bring in. Yeah, and I used the word inappropriately before because I'm saying that the, the word client and vendor are dead, but because we're all connected. I mean, yeah. in some methodology or another. But to you, to your question, you know, I what I envision is absolutely, you know, and I loved how you did the what I do, the backwards and the frontwards. So you know, holding their vendors accountable and then ultimately providing technology as a tool to enable the client relationship. I mean, mm-hmm. that's really a big differentiator going forward. And I think a, a compass spec right combination tool used at the packaging vendor level, highly powerful, both from a supplier standpoint and also from a adding value to their client relationships. It's, it's a big opportunity out there. All right. So then the ultimate question, where do people go to get all of this great information or to sign up or to have people contact them or we're going to get Prashant's phone number right here. On the- <laughs> Let's do it. My phone number and Matthew, your phone number, right? Exactly. Okay. There you go. Uh, you know, from our perspective, Adam, it's obviously it's specright.com and, and certainly uh, we avail that, but, yep. but uh, in, in same, in either direction, we'll, we'll push information to Prashant's team that relies on what they're looking for and, and vice versa. But Pr- Prashant, what's a good contact method for, for direct triac? Yeah. So for us, it's triac.com. You can go there and, you know. Uh, can you spell that for me real quick? T-R-A-Y-A-K. P-R-A-Y-A-K. Dot com. Yeah. Got so it. that's our company. You can just go there and uh, reach out to us and we'd be happy to get in touch. And what are your TikTok handles? <laughs> Don't have no, one. No TikTok yet? No TikTok. Come on, what, Matthew. What Matthew, you do. <laughs> you know what? Uh, you know, uh, Adam, you know my team. Laura's got it all in control. I'll have her get it to you. <laughs> oh, okay. Great. <laughs> Oh, that's great. All right. So specright.com, triac.com, uh, Matthew, Prashant, it's been a, a pleasure. I am, I'm excited for the day when I can look back on this moment and say, I knew those two guys <laughs> back in 2021 when this, when this old thing was formed and you know, you'll be, you'll be out, uh, you know, giving some, uh, I guess I'll have gray hair or, or <laughs> Well, yeah, obviously, but you know, it'll be, uh, you'll, you'll be, you'll be helping set, you know, governmental policies and on CNN getting interviewed for all the great work you're doing. And, um, I'll be hosting this incredible podcast at the same time. So maybe you can come back for a third or fourth time then, and I'll get you the t-shirt. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you both very much. I appreciate it. Great to chat with you. Take care. Bye-bye. Hey, that wraps up another edition of the People of Packaging podcast. It would mean so much if you would like and share, rate, review, subscribe, because we want to change the world because we believe that packaging is awesome.